Good evening, and welcome to our continuing series, Explorations in Savagery. This is a wonderful passage, and we're grateful to have Alok Bhai with us. To begin this passage, I'd like to speak just for a moment about the first line. In all the previous editions of Savitri that I have read, the word was thus. Thus was a seed cast into endless time. And I asked <coughs> the archives if I might see Sri Aurobindo's many, many changes. And they showed me that the last one, in the last one, he changed to this. I still feel thus, but <laughs> I have to read this. And uh, thus was so powerful to me. But we begin. This was a seed cast into endless time. A word is spoken, or a light is shown. A moment sees. The ages toiled to express. So, flashing out of the timeless, leaped the worlds. An eternal instant is the cause of the years. All he had done was to prepare a field. His small beginnings asked for a mighty end. For all that he had been must now new shape in him, her joy to embody, to enshrine her beauty and greatness in his house of life. But now his being was too <coughs> wide for self. His heart's demand had grown immeasurable. His single freedom could not satisfy. Her light, her bliss, he asked for earth and men. But vain are human power and human love to break earth's seal of ignorance and death. His nature, his nature's might seemed now an infant's grasp. Heaven is too high for outstretched hands to seize. This light comes not by struggle or by thought. In the mind's silence, <clears throat> the transcendent acts, and the hushed heart hears the unuttered word. A vast surrender was his only strength. Yeah, it's a very powerful passage. And... Um, there's another this, we start from there. It's a very powerful uh, five lines from above. This known as in a thunder flash of God. What is known to Ashapati? It is the Divine Mother who carries the key to the transformation. So we sounds the most uh, simplest and natural of things, but this known. He has discovered that she can completely transmute life and it can become all harmonious, all sweetness, all delight above the wonder of God, below the wonder of the embraced divine. So this whole life can undergo a transmutation by her touch, this known. And this carries in itself the quintessence of the yoga. Uh, mother says at one place that to discover me should be after having walked a certain path and you discover her that she is the one who carry who transmutes. So and and it happens. I have seen it with many persons that for a long time it is Shurabindo, Shurabindo. A time comes when Shurabindo hands over to the mother. Now you take over. Yes. So this known, there is a moment when the soul recognizes the divine mother. When someone asks the mother that how do uh, how do you initiate in the yoga? What do you mean when you say that you have initiated someone? Often people ask this question, who initiates in this yoga? First of all, there are no Babaji's <laughs> initiating in this yoga, thankfully. 
people don't realize what a grace it is and the second is that okay then how do i know that i have been initiated the mother says when i tell someone that you have been initiated or i have initiated you it means that i have revealed myself to the person and this is an inner revelation it is nothing to do with any amount of lectures talks sermons convincing mm. nothing there is no proselytizing involved at all a moment comes when you stand before her and you know ah this is she of whom the world has heard that's it and she says anybody who has seen me thus in one moment he is finished and then she says he is finished for all lives he can't escape he should not even try <laughs> run away she had been no use as creatrix so yes, many times yes. in savitry he she goes on to say that even those who have turned hostile and gone away i hold myself responsible for them even those who revolted turned hostile and went yes, away yes so this known is so powerful as in a thunder flash of god you can't know it other than in intuitive revelation the thunder flash is the intuitive revelation yes. that this is she the rapture of things eternal filled his limbs and then what the heart feels is a delight amazement fell upon his ravished sense his spirit was caught in her intolerant flame she brooks no obstacle then she will make sure that the entire being now sooner or later is caught up in that fire and even the last uh, resistances are smashed out so if this is the beautiful destiny then why not uh, why delay the whole process <laughs> you have <laughs> you have to get burned why get roasted slowly <laughs> but even if it takes lives yeah this is, is finished us. yes she is see. always with us so we now you know then what happens after that has been beautiful beautifully described uh, it is not to be done artificially people often ask how can i become one pointed how can i become sincere basic thing is that orient yourself to the mother keep the mother at the center and slowly everything falls in place it's not by a mental you know gymnastics that one can do it mental gymnastics reminds me of a small little conversation i had with dr maheshwari he used to stay in the mission house uh, mission road uh, house and in the very beginning so i had gone there and i he said so alok what are you thinking i said maheshwar ji i want to be sincere and i am you know i am i look at you know all my what defects are there and i'll be very grateful if you can tell me you know uh, i would like that because maybe things i don't see but you can tell me what my mistakes and faults are he laughed and laughed <laughs> over tea and samosa <laughs> to add and then he says this is the mistake i said what he said that you are thinking of mistakes <laughs> he said this is the fault <laughs> he said all this mental engineering is fine <laughs> but it is the grace another person who met me in bikaner who, who had translated some of her works uh, in hindi and uh, he had come from ashram and i had just turned and very elderly man and someone told me someone has come from ashram would you like to meet that time like anyone coming from ashram for me was like mm. uh, you oh, know yes. everything oh, yes. i mean who won't feel like that i'm sure so i met him and i had read the synthesis and i was having beautiful experiences and i then i told him so uh, sir basically um, sure been the emphasizes on will that you have to get rid of this and reject that isn't it i was feeling very happy that i have got it mm. right and i am doing it all correct <laughs> so he listened quietly and then he says beta waise shirvin to surrender ki baat karte hain <laughs> basically shirvin do talks a lot more about surrender it hit me i still remember surrender so all that i was doing now what was that <laughs> then i understood what surrender means then i looked at whole synthesis from that light that what is the surrender and you know what it means he says you can't do it by yourself so that is how we see that this meeting is the quintessence the meeting of the soul with the divine mother divine mother and this is carries in itself the result that the centuries will follow to express this was a seed cast into endless time 
See, when someone asks your window that what has brought us here, it is not easy. What punya have we done to have the darshan of the embodied divine? So Shurabindu didn't uh, believe in those false modesty and all, you know, modesty is another form of ego. So he says very beautifully, he says, Bhakti in previous lives. Mm. <laughs> One. <laughs> oh. Second, he gives some kind of a relation physically with the mother or myself. Could be mother's uh, actual physical son or Shurabindu's, like we know, you know, Hector, uh, Dilip Kumar Rai was actually Shubhindu's brother. So, either that. And third, third he says, the, uh, the, the punyas of many lives coming to fruition as an action of grace. Oh. My God, you know, it's... So, when the seed was cast, we don't know. You know, Michelangelo throwing a little cross in the fire when mother has John of Arc is... You know, uh, getting burnt at the stake and she asked for the cross and nobody does it. And this priest who was part of the congregation, but he feels somewhere that, you know, it's unfair what we are doing. Probably she's right and he picks up a little hay, makes a cross and throws into the fire. And it is said that the mother remembered this action. Who was Michelangelo in this life? Our Amritta. Mother remembered yes, this action. Yes. So you can imagine, you know, Hector, who goes and, you know, fends Paris and is killed by Achilles. Who is he in this life? Dilip Kumar Roy. I, this was a seed cast in endless time. One little deed, we don't know which moment <laughs> it has happened. <laughs> and the divine takes note. And my great Guide Nolini. Yes, of the course. The gardener at yeah. Versailles. Yes, uh, oh. so he was French oh. king, no? Huh? Louis. Uh, yes, yes, the Louis sun king. Yes. yes, the sun king. The last of the oh. Louis series. And he was a gardener. So what must have taken place, we don't know. So this was a seed cast in endless time. So we can look at it both ways. Yes. So we can look at it as thus that the vision. Mm -hmm. Or we can look at it like this vision was the quintessence, the seed, yes. which carried within itself the result of the ages. A word is spoken or a light is shown. A moment sees the ages toil to express. You see, this is so true. My first turning, the first thing I have ever read of Sri is opening the synthesis, first thing ever. And I saw all life is yoga. Mm. And I said, this is it. I said, this is what I'm seeking. I didn't understand a word about what it means. I'm still striving to understand. <laughs> it's very vast. Because it has got into me that every activity, every movement of life can be and should be turned into yoga. Now, now I realize it's a tall calling. All life is yoga. So a word is spoken. I know people who turned, they just looked at the mother's eyes and it was finished. Yeah. Or a light is shown. A moment sees the ages toil to express. And then he gives a beautiful example. So flashing out of the timeless leap the worlds. There's another place where he gives such an example that when Savitri and Satyavan meet. And he says, what is going on? In the heart of the two. And he gives the example. As when a soul is approaching merger with the Supreme. That is the experience closest upon earth. The mimic, mimic of that experience closest. Is when a lover and beloved they are going to meet. In an utter embrace. As when a soul approaches. That state. So similarly he says. Thus flashed out. So flashed out, out of the timeless. So this, these words that came out. They carried within itself the seed of its fulfillment. How powerful it is. Sri Krishna says that in the Gita, Visarga, where does karma originate? He doesn't say you and you and you. I. He is the origin of the world. So karma originates from there. And therefore, he takes upon himself the entire responsibility when he says, Sarva dharman kar parityaj mamikam shannam praja. Because he is the origin of that. All impulsion ultimately in its root comes from there. And therefore, because they have lived out of the timeless, therefore their destiny is to 
express the timeless in, in the play of time. An eternal instant is the cause of the years. And now this comes, you know, Mother said two things about Sri One of them is Sri compassion. Second is about his humility. And it takes time to understand. She says, uh, I haven't seen a single gentleman so perfectly humble as Sri Now There are a number of stories of his humility, including the famous one where he says, I suppose this letter has to be posted. Can we imagine a master for whom people would be ready to give their life? Picks up a letter and says, I suppose this has to be posted. Meaning thereby, can somebody do it, please? And Niruddha writes, a hundred hungry hands would want to grab that letter. <laughs> me, me too, me too. <laughs> Original, me too, me too. Hungry hands. Same thing, somebody who wanted to wash your window's clothes, he is envying Champaklalji and... One day he is standing and sees Sri come on the window, looking on the courtyard. And uh, he gets a, as if by a gesture Sri has called. He doesn't, you know, ex but he goes up. And Sri is uh, waiting and he says, uh, I suppose this has to be washed with his dhoti in hand. Uh, would you be able to do it? Because Champaklal is not there, you know. And who wouldn't be overjoyed? He brings the dhoti in the evening and by then, Champaklalji knows what has happened. So he, when this man gives the dhoti to Shurabindo, Shurabindo says, All your karmas of previous lives have been washed away. One act. <laughs> Speak about one act. In Ramayana, it is there, no? One act. I have taken you across the river. You cross me the Bhavsagar. One act. So Champaklalji is very surprised. He has never told me any such thing. <laughs> Shobindo turns towards him, smiles, putting his hand on his shoulder, Champaklalji, and says, your hand is yours too. <laughs> it's understood. <laughs> and yours too. It is understood. <laughs> so just imagine what it means. And now see the humility. After all this tapasya of Ashupati, which I am not aware of, any person in the spiritual history of mankind who could have undertaken, he writes, all he had done was to prepare a field. So much so that when someone says uh, that about supermind and all, then one of the conversations he casually mentions, I have come to prepare not for the fulfillment. He admits mm. that. Yes. He knew. Yes. Still he is continuing to do. Because he knew that, you know, if I don't prepare, it will never it be. It won't happen. It won't happen. Mm -hmm. All he had done was to prepare a field. His small beginnings asked for a mighty end. And what a beginning. Small beginning. <laughs> People would die a thousand times to have a little glimpse of this wonderful experience. Which, if you look, hardly one or two here or there had such a glimpse. And he says, his small beginnings asked for a mighty end. For all that he had been must now new shape. In him, her joy to embody, to enshrine her beauty and greatness in his house of life. So meeting the mother, having a glimpse of the mother, a, reading a word, is only the, a small beginning. That's why she gave a message to society, to know is good. To become is better. better. To be, be, that is perfect. Yeah. So now he says, this is only a beginning. This joy must be embodied in the whole of life. We have to go back also to the, to book one. Yes. See all the tapasya that yeah. he has done. And all the experience, oh. marvelous. And he calls it a small beginning. I mean, Shobindo, when he comes to Pondicherry, there is a letter of his to Barin. And Barin says, why don't you come and, you know, carry your bundle? All the gurus are tying their bundle. He says, he says I have also tied my bundle. And I don't want to, I have done my bit of man-making. Now I want to do God-man-making. 
and then he explains of course god man with a dash in between not god man of and then he explains very beautifully he says what i have discovered is that an average vedantin touches only the outermost hem of the robe of the eternal and an average bhakta who leaps in joy and ecstasy has just got a little spilth of that ananda and he is satisfied with it he says i am not because it's just nothing but small so you know when shobindo says a small beginning you have to see it in that context but now his being was too white for self his heart's demand had grown immeasurable his single freedom could not satisfy her light of bliss he asked for earth and men that's what she mentioned that shurbindo renounced the realization in his own personal body to hasten the realization of earth i think 12th or 7th or 9th december this message is there 1950 he could have done it could have gone ahead but uh, but he they renounced because they had to carry every, everybody together yes and this shobindo explains that as we grow in yoga because the consciousness expands and become more and more cosmic so we invariably take the difficulties and problems of others whether we like it or not yes. even recent bulletin the one of the disciple who has asked questions from shobindo asked him because he has uh, tried to help someone and uh, you know told someone what should be the attitude and all and then he writes to shirbindo he says i said this and in front of j this happened and j told me you shouldn't bother you should first uh, hmm. only after you have realized your siddhi should you help others so i said yeah yeah but you know as uh, co travelers we can do this also so what is your view shirbindo says much can be said for both <laughs> <laughs> much can be said for both then he says of course it is always ideal if you first realize the siddhi shri ramakrishna used to say that when vivekananda started helping people so one day he called him and scolded him he said jama kiya nahi kharcha karne laga you have not even you know accumulated in your bank and you have started spending first you have some you know so so this is one attitude but shurbindo took the other he said of course it is ideal if you complete your siddhi first and then help but then he says but always but it is not always possible or feasible to wait for that so he took that approach and he says the mother and shirbindu that when they were going into yoga this um, almost and seemingly impossible work they were to decide whether we go first realize it and then take up others or we carry everybody together and the mother says that decision was spontaneous hmm. that is how the ashram came into existence so ashram grew organically their difficulties they kept taking and growing and what they received kept going into this so it, it ashram grew up like that and even now it is like that yes. she said that's how it is a collectivity people ask that why the general level of consciousness in the ashram has gone down she said no the general level has gone up but individually because earlier you were like cocoons so each one was progressing so those time sadhaks uh, had this that they were each one unique and you know they were like kept isolated and there were very few very few but after 58 that modus operandi has changed even those time sadhaks suddenly felt the difficulty and they expressed this yeah. this is very difficult because the role the process changed she says now it is no more like that so now each sadhak takes upon himself the difficulties of others so if everyone progresses the progress is fast otherwise few who progress help others and those who do not their difficulties are taken up by some other so and she gives the example she say it's it's the law of life that the stronger must bear the burden of the others yes so this is where you know his being has grown wide he is not satisfied with his own freedom and his light her light he asks for earth and men but how to get this light now you know tapasya ends here you know the divine mother you had a glimpse so this this few lines remind me of one of the upanishads kathopanishad when nachiketa asks yama how you can get this light he doesn't ask but it is implied in in his question 
because he has asked the secret of immortality and this verse is also repeated in another upanishad one of those few verses which are repeated into the other one i am forgetting probably swetashtar so the shloka goes na yamatma na pravachane na medha na bahuna shutin yam veshe vranute ten labhyas tashesh atma vivranute tanusa so what does it say na yamatma pravachane not by much learning of scriptures not by much reading not by lecturing not by sermons na medha not by intellect now bahuna shrutin by hearing lot of people how does it reveal itself all this can be preparation but the moment it reveals itself is yam veshya vranute the self reveals itself of its own accord when it chooses by its own grace to reveal itself to a individual and here it comes but vain are human power and human love those who rely on tapasya and oh i have lot of bhakti for mother what do we know about bhakti and people say oh i love the divine it's a very very big statement very big statement human beings we are incapable of loving only divine knows how to love and if little bit we can love it's only a grace but vain are human power and human love to break earth seal of ignorance and death we don't know in what whose grip we are his nature's might seemed now in infant's grasp look at again the humility this is ashupati is saying this is not nature there is all the occult powers energies forces he says his nature's might now seemed in infant's grasp before the divine mother and we we can't imagine somebody ask shurbindo i believe that if the divine mother wants she can create a supramental world here right now instantly but that will not be an evolutionary world am i right she says yes the supramental world there has been created by her and she can create it right here but it will not be it will be completely disconnected with with the world of earth and therefore what happens to these human beings there will be no link probably there will be a catastrophe will be gone and supramental beings will be here so that's not what she wants then another question he asked that i believe that if you are integrally sincere the divine mother can effectuate the transformation instantly shobindu says yes that is absolutely right integrally sincere means right to the cells even the most obscure cells so we can imagine what she has brought his nature's might now seemed an infant's grasp heaven is too high for outstretched hands to seize you know we may put our hands like this and keep calling <laughs> no puns intended <laughs> but heaven's grace doesn't come like that it sees what is going on here rather than what is going on outside as someone has said from the divine point of view what goes on inside is much more important than what is going on outside so the gita was given to arjuna on the battlefield not to a hermit sitting in the forest quietly doing all the malas so heaven is too high for outstretched hands to seize now comes that upanishadic verse mm -hmm. this light comes not by struggle or by thought in the minds silence the transcendent acts and the hushed heart hears the unuttered word so we have to just quiet in the mind and quiet in the heart so what's happening out there all kinds of doubts analysis intellectual processes this way or that way all this has to be quieted of course even the quietening happens by grace by opening to her light and the heart with all its strings attached here little there little there and everywhere invested heart must be hushed it's full of those cries so when these two are quieted Then the light acts. It's always there. This is a very beautiful um, prayer of the mother. See where she says the uh, vital has to be distrusted when it comes to work. It is always jumping, running, and has an illusion. It is an illusion that it's a great worker because morning till evening it is running like a monkey. Then she says, what is needed is to bring peace and quietude. So work has to be done, but in a state of peace and quietude. and then that prayer ends very beautifully in peace and silence the eternal manifests 
let nothing disturb you and the eternal will manifest what we do is the opposite why aren't you helping mother help me then again after few minutes mother when are you <laughs> peace you have told her now allow her to act yes. in peace and silence the eternal manifests so what we have to do a vast surrender was his only strength one of my most favorite lines what we can do at the end at the end you realize what shrivindra says in one of his essays self surrendered to the divine and infinite mother is our only way it is the beginning and the end of the sadhana and the path in between i think so you realize that you may try not that people are not trying try but at the end you realize ma take me just as i am and vast so everything that comes inside all the beings people everybody forces energies ashwapati's consciousness cosmic he's just offering to the divine mother what is seen it must be and that's how they say that when people said who is you know perfect example of surrender in yoga so hardan bakshi will say don't tell anybody but there are only two people who sri arbindo and the mother this was prachalit in the ashram so what was it shobindo has made perfect surrender to the mother and the mother had made perfect surrender to shobindo everything that was happening mother would come and tell shobindo shobindo had her, his sanction behind everything that she did yes. there was never any this thing oh acha mother has said this okay let me think i'll discuss with her now if mother has said that's the final word at the same time you see shobindo sitting like a baby waiting for his breakfast which would come at 9 10 11 12 one o'clock three o'clock once why because when mother comes then he will eat never with mother only once they had together what is surrender i mean we can't imagine vast surrender everything just to mother take this mother take this this is yours this is yours a power that lives upon the heights must act this is the supramental which has not yet come at this point of time in the journey of ashwapati what this power does bring into life's closed room the immortal's air and fill the finite with the infinite so you know imagine all that's why we feel claustrophobic stifled we feel suffocated a lot of people feel like that it expresses in various ways i want to run away from here i even extreme when people are completely closed oh it is better to die because you know that basically it's internal stifling what we need is to open the door one window even a little narrow passage for the immortal seer to come in and fill the finite with the infinite meaning thereby there will be no end to that inexhaustible source of energy strength light love sweetness harmony ananda it again reminds of a line from the ishupanishad ishupanishad says avoid these two extremes one is those who live only in this world and think this world is everything and they are living in total blindness because you know, they don't they live in multiplicity this that you this and a greater darkness those who go into that world of oneness and forget this multiplicity andam tama bhuya pravishanti so what is to be done it says vidyanch avidyanch yast dvedo bhayam saha the two together vidya must inform this field of avidya oneness must be always there behind while we deal with multiplicity because it'll be each one will have a different law of evolution it is not sameness oneness is not sameness that will be absurdity oneness for each one there is a different law of evolution and accordingly it deals with each one differently we have our idea of human justice we interpose upon di divine justice and oh everybody is same everybody is not same this is a truth of nature in nature you see it even the same thing is not the same it has different stages of evolution <laughs> and they have to and each has its perfection each has its destiny and they have to be dealt with differently there are plants you need to keep in sunlight compassion of the divine as you have been those compassion yes it needs sunlight 
there are plants which will not grow in sunlight you have to keep them inside you need shade there are plants which need to be watered more regularly there are plants which if you water too much it will die so in nature this is this is a human mental conception born of modern ideas of democracy it has its truth that there is the divine in all but not the way we understand so here he says fill the finite with the infinite you don't annul the finite finite has its own sense and meaning and what is this see now this is a herculean task someone once circulated this message i just see only these four lines i said please don't frighten people <laughs> send it from the beginning till the end it starts with vast surrender it starts with the aspiration seeking ashupati at that stage is trying it out otherwise people who just read you know three lines and they try it what happens i know someone who once said oh i'll tear up everything and i said see synthesis shobindu has cautioned this don't go with this kind of vyakulta in the yoga because in all likelihood you will slip and fall very badly and i know this individual that this exactly what happened i've seen with my own eyes I said you can't do it like that so study first develop peace equanimity all this is foundation of sadhana surrender constantly and keep rejecting but here what is mentioned is a final movement all that denies must be torn out and slain shobindu says a ramakrishna can do it and of course he is humble enough shobindu could do it the mother could do it so readily and easily all that denies must be torn out and slain and crush the many longings for whose sake we lose the one for whom our lives were made it's very good beautiful to remember always where are we going for what sake someone little elderly gentleman was showing today all the reports and all this i saw it at this point of time why are you worried about all this for god sake for all of us time is running out let us not lose the one for whom we are made just concentrate on that one <laughs> yeah, all this is okay but this is not the thing to be you know fill the fill the mind with and see this um, all the denies must be torn out and slain and crush the many longings see i uh, certain things mother and children they have done so naturally so we don't even see what it means i often wonder of course i know she is the divine mother but look you know how she came in 1920 she never looked back we complain oh india mein this problem is there that problem is there look at 1920 <laughs> problems and as a lady as a foreigner staying with an indian yogi imagine now the situation won't she have felt wants to go back to paris people you know graduate and want to go to foreign country and live there look at her so naturally she never made a bone about it it's i who just think and i wonder and it was so natural to her so much so that when she was asked to come to auroville because huta you know that famous mm. conversation oh, yeah. there will be a house of yours and all <laughs> she said okay okay then she said when when are you coming there mother she said you know obviously i will never go permanently there maybe once like on a drive or something and then she says why she won't go permanently what is the reason she says you know shorbindo is here no other logic shorbindo is here what a all that denies must be torn out and slain won't her heart we talked about you know big stories about buddha and his tyaga you think uh, he, her heart won't have felt heart of a mother being away from the child brother other people in the family and she had that love it's not that when first time andrada came after many years and she had all this in paris yes all the cultural things yes. music art everything, everything. gave it all up and when she goes to karaikal first day when she stays she stays in a dark dingy room filled with white ants and bandicoots 
seated and said, let me pick up a return ticket. Maybe I made a mistake. <laughs> Once I wrote to her and I said, Mother, I would like to send you 50 recordings of all the music you have not heard mm -hmm. since you've been in the ashram. And Mother writes back in this long letter, she underlines Ravel and Debussy and says, I have heard about everything that they have written, <laughs> but from here on I haven't heard anything. <laughs> I sent her those 50 recordings and every day she listened to one. See, what a grace. See, but never for that she would, you know, I, I mean, when first time Andreda comes, it's a very beautiful meeting. Mm. How she waits in Golconda and she sends suddenly Pavitra Da to find out if a telegram has come. So one can see the human mother also. Yes. And yet she left behind. Look at the beauty of that. And then when she is asked about reminiscences, I mean, if we are asked, you know, how you came to Pondicherry, uh, what lovely stories. <laughs> mother. Reminiscences. She says, the reminiscences will be short. short. <laughs> I came to India to meet Shirobindo. I stayed here in India to live with Shirobindo. And I continue to live here to do his work, which is of enlightening mankind and awakening them to the divine love. So as to hasten the advent of truth upon earth. What a... Reminiscences, four lines. Yes. This is the all that denies. So people misunderstand it that denies, oh, I have to, this desire, that desire. They start, you know, wearing white clothes and I'm sorry for that, you know, but, uh, you know, often when I see people wearing all the time white clothes, why? It's not necessary. It's That is not what is meant here. Or, you know, I'll not go out and eat anything as if this is what counts. Ari, if you want to die, she has said at one place, die to the ego. That's far more difficult. <laughs> the ego of being a sadhak, if it finds the, the most biggest door is, oh, I am a sadhak henceforth. I am, I am doing sadhana. You know, people who lived here in the beginning, when I would ask people, then they would laugh. Don't use this word. <laughs> Why? Nobody is doing sadhana here. Is it? We are all mother's children. By and by I understood how profound were those words. Who can do sadhana of Shurabindu and the mother? Only Shurabindu and the mother can do the sadhana of Shurabindu and the mother. Uh, uh, Pranav Das, one, one of his hmm. reminiscences much later. He says, you realize it much later. Only they can do this yoga. What we have to do? Open and receive. So this is where the whole sadhana lies, if at all. But it's not something external, it's an inner state of denying, tearing away all the desires that are having root. And she says that the ascetic who tries to, when she was asked that, you know, whom do you prefer, the man of the world or the ascetic? She said the man of the world is better. Why? The ascetic who finds ways and means to not eat is as much obsessed with food as the man who is finding ways and means to go to different places and eat. Because he's all the time obsessed. Oh, if I eat, my dharma will go away. But if you are, if you receive everything as a prashad, you know, then that's what our scriptures tell us also. Mira Bhai, she says, if you give me pearls in my hair, braid my hair with, you know, strings of pearls, I'll do it happily. If you make me sleep in a palace, I am fine with it. If you make me sleep on floor, I am fine with it. People don't understand this. Uh, recently I heard a story and it's worth sharing, Navjaji. Ah. So, I just met somebody who knew the whole drama as it unfolded. So people that time and people are always there to point fingers is the easiest thing to do. So once they told uh, this person that, you know, I don't understand, uh, you speak about Bhaiji and he is a very spiritually such a great person. Whenever he goes outside, he lives in five-star hotels and what is this? So she said, I don't know, I'll ask him. So, okay. So she asked him, this is what people are telling about you. He says, good, you asked. Then he explained, he said, see, as far as when I go outside, then he said, I'll tell you about the uh, later on. When I go outside, even here, I am perfectly fine sleeping on the floor. 
but i have to meet people to get money for the work people will not come these business magnates are not going to come to me in if i am staying in somebody's little flat and they will come and meet me and give money you know tatas and birlas so i have to fix a place where they can come and i can meet them and ask for it so this is how it works but as far as my everyday living is concerned and which is a true story and i was so touched when i heard it of his meals not only meals meals was one thing yes where he asked the mother that uh, you know i am able to remember you all the time but when i eat i forget you she asked him do you eat alone or in company says with family that was enough for him he started eating alone but more importantly once he had fever so mother came to visit his place and she sat on the cot on which bhai ji was sleeping from that day onwards he put mother's picture on the cot and used to sleep on the floor on a mat now this is another side and but people you know so it is not external show of overcoming desire it is inwardly you have you are untouched by it it doesn't matter you may be sleeping on a on a little floor or you may be sleeping on a luxury pillow you may be eating this or that but you are doing it constantly oh ma so beautiful that is the state where it is desires are gone to constantly remember the one for whom we are made if i'll forget him while eating some good food or while sleeping on a good uh, this thing then my probably i not even have the calling maybe in a very when natures are very crude the only time when this is required should be the says there there are some natures which are very crude they need these ascetic processes because the nature is crude not because the sadhana is advanced so you need to outwardly enforce upon yourself some external kind of i won't step out because your nature you can't bear you you'll forget but those who are ready will anywhere you are there you know i remember another mystic or somebody on the path of yoga he sincere man with lot of experiences not on this path but some other path so he was an air force officer and you know he would go on party he would dance with his wife on the floor and somebody asked him ki you are such a we know that you are such a fine how are you able to do it he said very simple she dances i remember the lord i can do it what is there she is dancing i am remembering the lord she is happy i am happy <laughs> so, no, this yoga is of course uh, you know uh, far more different and difficult but as a basis yes so here this has to be seen and there comes this line which qualifies it now other claims had hushed in him their cry what we have to get rid of is this craving soul of desire this craving this uh, wanting this is the problem and this we will know inside not outside if there is a craving oh i must i must have this then there is a problem this want so now other claims had hushed in him their cry it's not about where you went what you ate what you wore but inside there is no such uh, missing or wanting or craving mm. which is the sign so what is he still what has happened to desire they are transmuted only he longed to draw her presence and power into his heart and mind and breathing frame what what is he asking come mother come mother come mother come mother into his heart and mind and frame only he yearned to call forever down her healing touch of love and truth and joy her love heals her truth heals her joy heals her peace heals her harmony heals so whenever we see all the dissonant things and evil and darkness and suffering this is our work to be a more difficult work than quarreling and trying to set right <laughs> only he longed only he yearned only he yearned to call forever down her healing touch of love and truth and joy into the darkness of the suffering world his soul was freed and given to her alone there is a double aspect in it one is the soul is free freed from ignorance but here it's not just freed ma now i am your monkey 
you make me dance the way you want me to dance. Look at this. His soul was freed and given to her alone. End of Canto 2.